A startup is a type of company, usually in the technology field, that allows mediocre men to feed their egos by exploiting the time, labor, or wealth of other people. Now, if you're watching this, there's a decent chance you want to create your own startup. Maybe you're a new grad, longtime software engineer, or a sociopath with an unquenchable desire for power and control. Either way, everyone is welcome here, as long as you don't have a life and have no problem working 18 hours a day, 7 days a week. First, let's talk about the difference between a startup and a traditional business. In a traditional business, you provide a good or service to someone in exchange for money. However, if you're stupid enough to start a company like this, you'll only be able to provide a good life for your family and send your kids to college. If you want to become supreme ruler of the world and satisfy your quench for power by landing on a Forbes list, there's only one way to do that. With a startup. In a startup, you sell imaginary goods or services and lose money. Losing money is key, because the more money you lose, the hotter your startup, and the more funding you'll be able to get. And with that extra funding, you'll be able to extract even more money from your users, basically providing you with a real-life infinite money hack. When founding your own startup, you'll first need to decide what your startup is going to do. Lucky for you, there are numerous fields that are incredibly hot in tech right now. Have a really big lung capacity? Try crypto. Fan of how banks fuck over the little guy? Fintech. Wanna exploit the vulnerable? Healthcare. Wanna exploit the already exploited? Do anything with on-demand in the name. Wanna do evil shit? AI. Wanna do evil shit, but you dropped out of college? Metaverse. Of course, these will all be irrelevant in three years, when the new Gigi Do Biddly Bop comes out, so you better get to working. You'll also have to decide if you're going to be an enterprise or consumer company. Enterprise companies sell their product to other enterprise companies in a never-ending cycle of keep the rich people's money away from poor people. Consumer companies, on the other hand, extract money from the poor people to put into the aforementioned cycle. Now that you've picked your field, it's time to turn your idea into a reality. A well-known principle in startups is to sell before you build, which basically means make up some fake shit and get people's money for it. After stealing people's money, I mean, receiving their advanced payment for the beta, it's time to get to work. If you're a technical founder, you can dive right in. If you're not technical, you're going to need to trick some unsuspecting CS grad into doing the work for you, with promises of untold riches and totally fair stock options. In those early moments, you'll be full of excitement and energy, chomping at the bit to do everything you can for your startup. Every line of code you write brings a fresh new coat of paint to your vision. Every git commit dash a dash m, nothing's gonna ever stop me now, motherfuckers, like a line of cocaine directly into your hippocampus. As you finish integrating the Stripe and Instagram APIs into your backend, you let out an ecstatic cry of joy. All that's left is to port your Figma design to React. What's a few more hours? You push your code live to AWS and are finally able to rest on a grateful universe. Three hours later, all of which you've spent trying to figure out why the console keeps telling you to go to hell and fuck yourself with an ethernet cable, you'll want to die. Living the dream, baby. The key to success when working at a startup is to have negative work-life balance. Or, as I like to call it, work. Oh, what's that? You wanted to watch Netflix after work hours? Get that weak shit out of here. You know you could have spent those hours working, right? Here's what a typical day at a startup looks like. 8 a.m. sharp, you burst through the door, fill his coffee in hand, and make your way past the altar of neoliberalism to your desk. From 8 to 9, you check your emails, Slack, Jira tickets, and generally just bullshit around pretending to do work while you wake up. From 9 to 9.30, you have your stand-up with your team, where everyone tries to bullshit a reason why they haven't finished the shit they said they would finish last week. After stand-up, you check out the bug that rolled in last night, realize you can't replicate it, spend two hours testing every permutation of every button on your site and reading the one-sentence bug report like it's the Da Vinci Code, go to the designated frustration conference room and scream into a pillow, and then come back and give up. At 12, it's time for your eight-minute lunch break. Let's go, people, that user data isn't going to sell itself. After lunch, you work until 2 on the new feature, being interrupted every 2 minutes by a support request or to provide feedback on something that doesn't need your feedback. 
From 2 to 4, you've got an architecture meeting to plan the next set of features, where a lot of pedantic arguing happens and no specs actually get written. From 4 to 7, you get nothing done, but have to pretend to do work, since it's more important to be able to say you're working 100 hour weeks than actually be smart about your productivity. Three months and the end of all communication with family and friends later, you'll finally have a 51% debugged product. Your DAOs, KPIs, TAMs, PPs, and D's nuts are looking good. You think to yourself, we're losing thousands of dollars per week. Perfect. We got him exactly where we want him. Time to go fundraise and take this to the next level. Fundraising is when you sell your company's stock for money and is an important part of the startup life cycle. After all, your $6,000 Bay Area rent and $20 sweet greens aren't going to pay for themselves. If you don't have rich parents or can't convince your broke parents to take out a second mortgage, you've really only got one option. VCs. VCs are typically known as venture capitalists, but I like to call them VCMs, vampiric con men. The job of a VC is to be the steward of billions of dollars. Not to do stupid shit like build affordable housing or feed the hungry, but to give to psychotic 20 and 30 year olds to build shit on the internet. For VCs, the appeal is clear. You're another layer of bullshit away from doing any real work, and you get to reap even bigger rewards. Now, when you hit up the Libertarian White Guy Club to ask for money, you're gonna need a pitch deck. A pitch deck is your way to communicate to the VC why they should invest in your company. The key thing to remember when making a pitch deck is to be as delusional as possible. Just say fuck it and draw an exponential curve for all your graphs and talk about how the space you're gonna be in is gonna grow to a hundred bajillion dollar market by 2030. In the actual pitch meeting with VCs, don't be intimidated by their LaCroix or fancy ass bathrooms. In fact, during your pitch, I recommend talking like Donald Trump and making grand doise unverifiable statements to power move those bitches. All in all, working in a startup isn't as glamorous as it seems. In fact, there are much, much, much easier ways to make money. But with perseverance, hard work, and lots of single guy privilege, you too can found your own successful startup. After all, when you concentrate wealth in the hands of a vast minority, liberally hand out money to another reckless, ethically barren minority, and then have no regulations on what they can do, what could go wrong?